For Black History Month, we are celebrating trailblazers who became leaders in their field and helped to change the course of history. And this morning, two athletes from different generations who helped reshape their sport. Willie O'Ree broke the NHL's color barrier back in 1958. The Boston Bruins winger took the ice in the midst of America's tumultuous fight to end Jim Crow. O'Ree, who is Canadian, is now 84 years old. 27-year-old Nazinga Prescott is an African foil fencer, American, sorry, foil fencer. In 2015, she became the first African-American woman to win an individual medal at the World Championships. These two trailblazers met for the very first time recently in Washington, D.C., where they talked about their historic journeys and the work that still needs to be done. When I stepped on the ice, I didn't realize that I was uh, breaking the color barrier or opening doors. And I read it in the paper uh, the next day. For me and my sport and fencing, I've been one of few, but I can't imagine what it's like to be the, the only person that looks like you. So how did it make you feel? I was thrilled, uh, you know, to be on the team at that time. And I was faced uh, with some from racism, but uh, I just kept it uh, in my mind that uh, I'm here to be the best hockey player I can be and to represent the hockey club to the best of my ability. I feel like it's kind of an extra feat that you have to overcome. Um, I, I don't feel like I know that. I started fencing through the Peter Rochebrook Foundation in New York. Peter is a six-time Olympian, he's African-American, and he wanted to bring fencing to more minority youth in New York. And so uh, he started this program and he sponsored my training because fencing is super expensive, so it excludes a lot of the population. I think we sent like seven or eight fencers to the Olympics. And so I had this community of black fencers that made it really fun and exciting, but I, I don't know what it would have been like to not have that buffer. The name calling and the racial remarks were, yeah. were there. Yeah. I've had cotton balls thrown on the ice. Oh, I've had no. black cats thrown on the ice, you know, in different cities, um, but I always kept it on the ice. I had one thought in mind uh, to play hockey and mm -hmm. uh, be the best hockey player I right. could be. Right. To this day, systematically, um, even if it's not by saying, you're black, you're not allowed, I think there's other constructs that have been developed to exclude black people. And I think it's wrong that you can only access certain sports if you have a certain amount of money. It's true. Do you think Jackie Robinson impacted your decision to stay in sport? Yes, he did. He made a big impact. Well, I met Jackie Robinson on two occasions. I met him when I was 14, went down to the dugout and shook hands with him, and I told Mr. Robinson that I not only played baseball, but I played hockey, and he didn't realize that there were any black kids playing hockey at I that time. I get that a lot. I get that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and in 1962, the NAACP had a luncheon for Mr. Robinson. And Mr. Robinson turned and he says, Willie O'Ree, he says, aren't you the young fellow I met in Brooklyn? Wow, you remember Now, he you. remembered That's me from awesome. 1949 to 1962, and I, awesome. I was in awe, but he did. He so, made it was so important. Plan. He knew how important it was, yeah. what you were doing. Yeah. Because uh, he'd done it, too. I stayed, uh, and now I'm called the Jackie Robinson of hockey. It, uh, the media gave me that name. I don't feel like a, a trailblazer. I just feel like a... But a, you are. An individual that, that excelled in the, in the game that he right. loved, and uh, to be the first in anything is, yeah. is, is, is great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I want to show you. I got this Friday in the mail. Oh, wow, what and is the it? The Canadian Mint That's awesome. has made a $20 silver on the other side is the queen. Right? <laughs> How can you say you're not a trailblazer? That's amazing. You're on some money. Uh, yeah, <laughs> my Bruins jersey is oh, here. Oh, wow. It's really respectful what you're doing with the NHL to change that like structure in the sports world here. That's the way right there. Now. After I had finished playing my career, I wanted to give back to the uh, the sport. Stick controls the puck. And then I came with the NHL and, mm -hmm. and worked with the diversity program, helping kids play hockey and learning them how to skate. And try been doing it now for for 20, going on 23 years. And That's it's, awesome. Uh, it's just uh, a second love. I'm with you. I want to share my sport. I don't want to be one of you. I want to be one of many. Wow. What a lovely conversation yes. between the two of them. And yeah. I think that they would each feed each other. Yeah. It was really beautiful to see. Who did that, guys? That was really nicely done.
Well done. My time. Really Bravo. That was very really, impressive really, people. really nice. Little hint of what Willie went through in 1958 coming yeah. through the NHL. Yeah. Maite, thank you. That was really, really beautiful. You know what I like? I like when she said, but you are a trailblazer. Yes. And I like seeing no him. No question he was. And I love that Jackie Robinson remembered him. That's how unusual he was. Yes. Yeah. And that he's still on skates at 84. Wow. Nice. Uh.